Hello everybody, welcome back to German Uniform Works, and today we'll be putting together a uniform which is rather of the old order. Quick note that we do not support any ideology nor is this meant to offend anybody or any particular group. This is for educational purposes only and serves the sole purpose to help reenactors or collectors. So let's begin. For today's project we're going to need quite a few things to begin with. For the start, we're going to need some golden buttons to replace the silver ones. Next up, we have our iconic white collar tabs. Whoops. I like these. They do have velvet. They're from Italy. Look fancy and are quite nice to touch. Next up, we'll need ciphers, field marshal batons, and the shoulder board, which in one I have already completed. We will cover this in another video should this be requested. And then, of course, out of all insignia, we require the eagle. Now, during the video, I will be covering the swastika due to multiple reasons, uh, regardless of what comments I make or what warnings I give. YouTube tends to be very icky, one could say, about it. And so, simply to avoid any further problems, we will be covering it throughout the entire video. And last but not least, we'll need one more thing. Another M27 German uniform jacket. Now to quickly add, as you have probably seen in the description, we will also be doing how to mount medals or at least the loops for them. And um, also to add, we will be sewing in the shoulder boards and not using the shoulder board loops as they are given right here. So the first step out of all steps, which is probably the easiest, is to replace the silver buttons with golden ones. Now all standard buttons are generally 21 millimeters in size. Uh, you will find this on more professional reenactment jackets but you'll also find this in any book that covers uniforms of that era. Now with scissors simply remove the button and remove the thread. Now generally after a button is removed uh, I like to mark it with a bit of Taylor's chalk uh, to simply remind myself, in case I get distracted by anything else, uh, where the button originally was. Now, as seen in the previous projects, do use multiple strands of this string or whatever thread you're using before attaching the button. Now, I won't be specifically covering how to attach the button, as it should be fairly simple, and it was covered in the tutorial where we first attached shoulder boards into the shoulder seam itself. So should be fairly easy. Once that's done, it should roughly look like this. Now if you're wondering why I did the shoulder board button first, or why I even sewed it back in, is because I would like to keep the reference where the shoulder board loop would sit once we attach it. So of course if you want to do the shoulder boards first and then attach all the buttons, that is up to you, but I will begin with the easiest steps which is simply changing all of the buttons. So it should be the easiest step for everyone. But as said, this is only for reference. So once all buttons have been replaced, it should look like this. All of them should be gold, have their standard sizes. And we can move on to putting on the collar tabs. Now as for attaching the shoulder board, I have mentioned in the other video, as for the distances, and they are still one centimeter parallel to both lines, which you can see here. See, so there you go, right here, and half a millimeter roughly from this stitch line. And using the ladder stitch, it should look perfect. And don't remember, it doesn't really matter if it's off by a few millimeters, there's always tolerance for these things. So I won't show it in detail as I did in the last video, as the tutorial was already done. So we'll be right back. Once the color tabs are attached, should look something like this and next up we'll be sewing in our shoulder boards. Now keep in mind that since this material is rather thick and of more far more quality than the common officer's shoulder board you will have to make tiny holes previously before sewing this in in order to make it easier to go through with a thin needle. So do yourself that favor put in a few holes it doesn't have to be at this distance it can be as many as you need or as many as you want. 
but I chose to be a little more in detail, so I chose these. Now once both the shoulder boards and collar tabs are fully attached, we'll be moving over to attaching the eagle. Now to place the eagle, simply put it over the right chest pocket and turn it to where it's at the same angle as the pocket flap itself. Now it doesn't have to be super precise. This is, it doesn't really matter if it's off a few degrees, but what it should be is that the eagle carrying the reef should be lined up with the button at center. Once you have that done, all you really have to do is sew it down. Now due to the fact that you cannot use a hidden stitch such as ladder stitch on the eagle itself, you'll have to buy a thread that is the same color as the backing of the eagle, which in this case should be around this. A dark olive green, well, dark green in general, should work just fine. You won't need many stitches, and so it shouldn't be too obvious what color you're using. So I got the eagle started, and the way we're going to attach this is simply choose a starting point and then make big steps. Now I'll simply do big steps. There's no need to be very specific with this one or in detail as even other reenactment jackets you'll see that are very simply attached so simply do these big steps go all around tie it off wherever you wish and it should be done so now that the eagle is attached we can move over to our next and final step and that will be attaching metal loops for attaching or mounting any metal such as ribbon bars or the iron cross to attach metal loops to a jacket that's already finished, you cannot use thread loops to do so, unless of course you're willing to go through the inside lining of the jacket. Since thread loops need to be tied off on both ends, and you probably don't want anything protruding from your lining, you can see it is quite impossible to avoid going through your lining on the inside of the jacket. Unless of course this is wanted, then it shouldn't be a problem. And so since I don't want to go through the lining of the jacket, We'll do a simple loop, works the same way, is not necessarily as authentic as a thread loop, but we'll certainly get the job done. The first loop roughly starts one and a half centimeters above the left side pocket. And so to simply keep it there, roughly mark that area, well it's not the best but it will do, should look roughly like so. In height, the loop itself is only roughly six millimeters, hard to, hard to show right here, but six millimeters is where the loop goes in and goes out. I'll show you in a moment. To quickly add, and to avoid stalling this video any further than I already did past month, we'll simply be using the same color thread as we used on the eagle. This is to save time. Of course, you would probably use a color similar to uniform, though, as mentioned, if we want to spend any more time waiting on this video, we'll just use this. To quickly add, as for the angle of the different loops we were about to attach, it is not the same as the pocket, though not too far from it. So simply offset it slightly, as such, it is straight, but then also not straight. It's hard to explain, but there's no set angle as to how to make these. In fact, you can place it wherever you feel, though I will be doing it, as I've seen on other uniforms, slightly offset from the pocket angle, and that should do. So, roughly like so, with your thread already prepared and your needle through, just pull through and let it slowly tighten up. There you go. That's your first step. Now, you can either tighten up the loop as far as you can, since only a needle will pass through it, or you can use something such as a pencil or anything thin while looping around the object to keep a little space such as a screwdriver, just for reference or for example that I'm going to use to create that pocket. So do loop around it two or three times, 
before you tie it off. And we'll be back in a moment. So this is what the lube should look like. It does not look perfect, of course, and of course it's not tied off just yet. But I've looped around it three times using the screwdriver as a reference. It's tight enough. It'll certainly hold a metal bar or a ribbon bar, whatever you will put on it. And so the next stuff we're going to tie it off and move on to adding the rest. To tie it off, I did the standard double knot on the end of it while keeping the screwdriver placed inside the loop as to not tighten it any further than it already is. Now to make the knot that we just created here lie down against it and have nothing fraying away or out from it, simply take the needle, go through a certain amount of fabric, it doesn't matter how far, and then what we're going to do is, well, there it goes, stretch it as far as we can and then simply cut it off. And after that, move the fabric around to where it disappears, which should be fairly easy. And so once you've done that, there is your first loop. So roughly 2.8 centimeters or 2.6 ish, we'll be placing the next loop to the right. Simply repeat the steps that I mentioned earlier to complete the next loop and then we'll move on to place three more. So this is roughly what your metal loop should look like. This one didn't turn out quite as well as I wanted it to, but the rest are almost consistent. If one is shorter than the other, as you can see here, it doesn't matter much. It serves its purpose, even back in the day when they did attach it themselves, which on well, dress uniforms it wasn't quite as often. But if they did, they were certainly never perfect. And besides, once anything is attached, one can hardly see them. For the rest of the loops, I will not sew them on, but I will give you the markings and measurements as to where they are placed. So in the center one, the first loop on the pocket is placed from the button center down four and a half centimeters. And we'll have the first loop. This will be the top loop. The loop below the first one is placed three and a half centimeters towards the end of the pocket. So roughly right here. It's not perfect, but it certainly gets the job done. About three centimeters over to the left, you'll place the next loop starting right here. Underneath the pocket, simply go two centimeters down to place the first one across the seam and to place the second, simply go down three and a half, also across the seam. Just to mention to the sign once more, these measurements are not set in stone at all. You can certainly move them around the way you feel is uh, best for the uniform. These measurements were simply taking from another jacket that I've bought a longer time ago to give a, a standard to at least begin with. As mentioned, I would presumably reset these two lower to where one loop sits on the pocket and one right underneath. I will keep the ones underneath the pocket while I will move this one up just a little. But other than that, I do like the measurements and I will presumably keep most of them. As for this uniform, it is now done. It is completed. I hope you did enjoy all the different tutorial parts that I have created for you today. And do suggest any other projects. Perhaps at the end of the video, I will put up a little vote for people to decide what project we shall do next. Before I go for today, somebody in the comments mentioned or asked how to attach field grade shoulder boards. Um, field grade shoulder boards are exactly these, meaning they're not sewn in into the uniform. And also, yes, this is a completely different uniform that I've gotten quite a while ago. So just to quickly show, it's fairly simple. You have this on purpose. This is what actually keeps the shoulder board down. So simply take it, set it through the loop, set it to where the button would be, and then close it. And then you can screw down your button. Now, on a field uniform, you would sew down the button. These are generally used for dress uniforms as to attach a gillet 
or in some cases certain orders that require the wearer for the wearer to use a sash. So I hope this helps as well.